Now that we've completed developing the excitation tables, we can go back to our state table and see how to develop the equations for the B flip-flops. Right, we're going to have one state equation for each one of the flip-flops. So we have two flip-flops in our state table, Q1 and Q0. So we will develop state equations for the next state outputs of each one of those, so Q0 plus Q1 plus. Right. And what we have to do then is we have to use the idea of the excitation tables that were developed from the characteristic equation of the D flip-flop where we said Q next, so Q in the next state should always be whatever is on input D. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to fill in our state table. Now this is the completed state table, but let's see how we do that. I'm going to open up the spreadsheet where this was created. Right. This was then our state transition table. Right? We had all of our present state inputs over here. So our present states were represented by Q1 and Q0. We had our external input of X that could be a 0 or a 1. We had these eight unique states, so these eight unique binary combinations. And then here we show the transition from when we're in the present state S0 and our input X is a 0, our next state will also be S0. Right? And we said then, we filled in, then for each one of these state transitions here, what the binary values were. Right. What, what I've done now is I've added then two, in, two columns to the state table, because we want to know what must be on the input to each D flip-flop on the next rising edge of the clock cycle, because remember Q next is equal to D. And we do that simply by using the relationship of saying, well, Q1 plus, right, D needs to be the same as Q1 plus. Notice Q1 plus, Q0 plus are not dependent on the present state simply because of that equation that we developed that would say Q1 plus is, sorry, is equal, Q1 plus is equal to D. All right, that is what we would, D1 or flip flop D1. All right, or we can actually say then that, D1 needs to be Q1 plus D0 and also be Q0 plus. And these are very easy then to develop, right? All we have to do really is copy whatever's in Q1 plus here, right? This is what goes here. And then whatever's in Q0 plus goes here. So we have the same thing. Or in other words, right, if we didn't do a copy paste, then I'd say that D1 is equal to Q1 next. So Q1 next here is a zero, right? And this is a zero, so this is a zero. This is a zero, so this is a zero. This is a one, so this is a one. There's a one, there's a one, all right? one, zero, zero. Similarly, we look at Q0 next. Well, D0 needs to be a zero in this case, right. a one here. Right. All I'm doing is copying over the same information just because of the relationship we developed. Right. Zero, zero, one. And now that we know what our inputs for each one of these flip-flops are, we're going to determine then the state equation, right? For D1, the input to D1 then will be based on, these are your outputs, D1. We'll use a K map. So we'll map these zeros and ones to our K map. We will then use all of our present state and our input X as our inputs to our K map. So we're gonna have an eight variable K map. And I've already done that over here, all right? But let's see if we copy this, how we develop this. So let me just copy this back over here. And actually, let's just, all right, that one's not formatted. Let's go back here and see how I put these in the state table. All right, this one, here, this map is going to be my map for D1. So when my binary input is 0, 0, 0, D1 is a 0. So I map a 0 here, right? So Q1, Q0, X, 0, 0, 0. 
And when this is a one, I've got a zero here, right? And then a binary zero, one, zero. Well, I get a zero there. I have a one here for the input. When Q1 is a zero, Q0 is a one, and X is a one, so zero, one, one. So here's zero, one, one. That should be a one. Then what if I finish mapping this for one, zero, zero? So here for this, there's a one here for the input of one, zero, zero. It's my one. I have a one here for the input of one, zero, one. There's my one there. I have a zero for the input of one, one, zero, of one, one, zero. So a zero there. And a zero here. Like I said, these are the outputs, the zeros and ones we mapped to the truth table. They're dependent on our present state inputs and our, so our present states, Q1, Q0, and then our input X, right? These are each of our inputs here. So we solve this in the same way. We solve for D1. I'm going to go ahead and solve for the ones. So I have this group of two ones here. Q1 is a one here, so this will be Q1. X is changing. Q0 is not changing. So Q0 is a zero in each one of these columns. So this is this group of two is Q1 and with Q0 not. Right, this one can't be grouped with anything. Well, Q1 is a zero, so Q1 not. Q0 is a one, Q0 and X is a one. So this is our equation then for D1. We do the same thing then with D0. We take this zero, map it to a truth table input. So when this is zero, 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 we get our zero here. For this one, our input is zero, zero, one. That is this one. All right, let's look at the other ones here. So here, my input is one, zero, zero. For this one here in D zero. So there's the one, zero, zero. The only other one I have here for D zero is when the input is one, one, one. So this is our one here. Everything else in the table is ones. So in this case, we don't really have anything that we can group to minimize. So if we were to write out the sum of products expression, we'd get this for D0. We'd get this, this expression right here. Now we can further reduce this using uh, XOR, XNOR gates. If we go through the Boolean algebra. Right? But for right now, I'm just leaving this at the sum of products. That's an exercise you can do to go ahead and reduce using the XOR, XNOR gates that we've previously learned. Right, so once we have that information, right, if we come back to the slides, right, going through your notes I've given you for class, with these slides, this is how then these inputs for D were derived. Right? And the next few slides then show you how we just go ahead and look at D1, right, breaks this down to the K maps and the equations that we just developed here and here. But the next thing we want to do is we want to take a last thing, I'm sorry, we didn't develop an equation for Z. Z is our other output from our circuit. Right. So what we do is we remember that Z is only dependent on the present state. So here are the Z's we develop. And if it's only dependent on the present state, then we just have two bits for input, right? The present state bits, Q1 and Q0. Well, the only place where Z happens to be a one is when we're in state S3. So that equation is very easy to, to develop. Z is simply the product of Q1 and it was Q0. Now that we have our equations for our outputs, we will go ahead and create the circuit schematic. It's going to end up looking something like this, but I would rather just go through and develop how we make this. All right, so let's keep in mind then what these equations are. We've got quarters here. All right, I've started a quarters project already um, to detect the sequence 110. I want to show you how we start building this up. So I have an em empty block schematic here. To add a D flip flop to it, I need to insert a symbol. Go to my symbol tool. If I type DFF, my D flip flops are found under primitives, storage. I just know if I type DFF, I get a D flip flop. I will actually need two of these. Right. Let me blow that up a little bigger. So. Should have turned on repeat insert mode. Right. We need two of these, right? One for Q1, one for Q0. All right, we developed some equations back here. We developed this one. 
here for D1. Let's see if I can copy this over to Cordis in terms of the text tool. All right. So here's our equation. D1 is equal to Q1 and with Q0 naught. Let's go ahead then, and we're going to use this as D0, this is Q0 naught. Let's put some input and output pins on here. So for the outputs from this, normally for the sequence detector, we would only want to see Z. That's our only output of the circuit. But we're going to go ahead and output uh, Q0 and Q1 so we can see our states, our st states that we're in and see the transitions. So an output pin for Q1 and Q0, and I'll also put an output pin on here for Z. So Z, this is going to be my Q0, Q0, and Q1. Now we can see from our equations here, we need a Q1 naught and a Q0 naught. I need a couple of not gates. Wire that to our output here. Wire this here. I will just label this as Q0 underscore. Not right, same way here. I'm going to call this one Q1 not. So that means here this is going to need to be my input to D1. And it's going to be the result. Right, of Q1 and with Q0 naught. So I'm going to need a two input AND gate and a three input AND gate for this and an OR gate. And two. And three. And my two input OR gate. Mm. or two. We don't need to label this wire, but if we wanted to, we would label this wire as D0, right? That's our input to the D flip-flop. Remember, this is what we're trying to drive here. Oh, that's my D1, not my D0. Copy the expression for D0 here. All right, here's what we're doing for D0. All right, so I've got a little problem here paying attention to what I was doing. This is going to be my D1. So let me move this down here. Let's focus on D1 for the time being. Like I said, if I want to name a wire, one. Alright, so I've got Q1 and with Q0 naught. So I name this wire. All right, we've got an output named Q1. All right. This is how our circuits become dependent on present state and current input value. Present state being Q1, Q0 naught, other external input being X. All right. So this is my going to be my Q0 naught. Label it with the same name that I gave the wire. Right. So that produces that output. And now here, 
I got Q or not. This is going to be end of the Q zero. And this will be ended with X. And we need to add our input of X. I haven't done that yet. There's X. All right, this circuit then has external inputs. It has X and it also needs a clock to drive the flip-flops. So let's go ahead and add some input pins here for that. And label that one X and We'll call this one uh, clock. No. Let's bring these up here. I should just be able to see if I can just name this clock here. Same name as my input pin. All right. And here as well. Now here, all right, is where I need these other. So I didn't reduce this to the X or X nor relationships, which would provide a gate, minim gate minimization. A quick way to do that is we can see right here that we can factor out X. This gives us Q1 naught and with Q0 naught. Right, let's go ahead to write this as D, D0, all right, if I factor out so Q1, Q0 naught, X naught, or with, if I factor out X, that's gonna give me Q1 naught, and with Q0 naught, right, or with Q1, Q0, zero, right, and you can see then that this is your X nor gate, but also we could take a look at the fact that we have Q1 and with X naught here, Q1 naught and with X, and we have Q0 naught is in both of these. We could rewrite this, we could add in an extra term. And we don't end up reducing very much. Here, one way I could rewrite this now from what we have is D0 is equal to Q1, Q0 naught, X naught, or with X and with Q1 exclusively or. So that should be, I want this to be X or Q0. I don't have the symbol I need here. And it's X nor, so I'll put the complement there or I could have just typed X nor here, since I'm kind of writing it in English. All right, so I need X and it with that. So that's one way then I could reduce some gates here. And let's put these gates in. So there's a way we could put an XOR gate. We still end up with an AND relationship that won't reduce it a whole lot more. No, I need to get out of text mode. That's why I can't. All right, insert symbol. XNOR. So I could have my XNOR here. And then I could have, let's see, I still need a two input AND gate. I need to and the results of that with X. Oh, 
Right, and then I've still got this relationship here. I'm still going to need a two input OR gate, two, which will end up feeding this D flip flop. So this will end up being my D0. I want to give that int internal wire a name D0, not C0. Right, this needs to now be Q1. And this is Q0. And I could add that three input AND gate. Here. Now this is all starting to look a bit messy. I probably should separate these out. Make this easier to read. And my first one is Q1 going to be ended with Q0 not. And then I'm also going to need an X not. So we'll have to throw in a not gate for that. That wire X not. And we got our inputs to D zero now. Now notice I didn't go ahead and fill in the reset or the preset associated with this. I could go ahead and say this. As I'm going to say this is my sequence 110 PDF. All right, so we've got these outputs on here. Now I don't have my circuitry to drive Z yet. Need to add that on there. All right, we said that was a two input AND gate. And that was simply. Q1 and it was Q0. Grab some of this, move it down so we have a little bit more room in between the two circuits. Right, and we can add, if we want to, a reset signal to this. I'm just going to draw a wire here. Reset is nice to let us go ahead and put this in state. S0, so reset, right, the output of our both flip-flops will be 0, 0, which gives us the starting state of 0, 0. So let's put in a reset signal. To do that, of course, we need the input for that as well. You don't necessarily need to preset. We'll see if Portis is happy or unhappy with us. All right, so let's save this. I can just run my uh, 
analysis and synthesis at this point to check the syntax. And, okay, first thing Cordis doesn't like, is it says two signals are defined with INST. I love that because, of course, Cordis is the one that gave the names, but, and two, so where's my other? So when I double click, it highlighted this has INST for an instance, and there's another gate here, this one that has INST. And we can't use the same instance number. I'll just call this one instance zero. Right. Save that. Let's run another analysis and synthesis. Our only warning is about parallel compilation, which I don't have that enabled. So it's okay for me to ignore that. All right, and that was successful except for that one warning. All right, that then is pretty much what our circuit looks like. We have these external inputs to our circuit. We have the clock. Oh, sorry, that is something I made before. And I actually did not want to overwrite this. I'm going to say that I overwrote a file I wanted to keep. We're going to make a block symbol out of this, and I'd already done this previously. And I really don't want to put all my input pins on here again. All right, so let's go back. Here's the circuit we just made. I could simulate this then. Uh, and I actually want to save this one with the name of sequence. I'm going to save it with this name. So file, save as. So sequence underscore 110 underscore DFF, because this is my D flip flop solution. Yeah. All right, I want to make that, so I'm going to remove this old file from my project. I just want to make that the top level entity and see if I can't drive it with a simulation. Then to see if my circuit's correct. Uh, I'm going to save that other one I just made. All right, so here's our circuit. I'm just running in the analysis and synthesis again. Since I hadn't made that the top level before, let's create a new simulation, file new, university program vector waveform. All right, let's set the end time at 80 nano. Let's import our signals. All right, so my outputs and my inputs are clock, reset. I'm just gonna put my reset up here. Here's X, my outputs. Uh, let's see, Q1's my most significant bet, so let me do that. Let me uh, form a group of these two. I'm going to call that group state. So we see that. Z is our sequence detect. Oh. Yeah. It's going to drive the reset high here. I'm going to drive the clock at 10 nano. Let's drive my input. Something like 12. Let me save this. And let's run it. All right, let's take a look now. All right, so we started out 
So we want to assert reset because um, you can see the D flip flop has a bubble on it that inverts it. I just never go ahead and reset the circuit, right? So if I hold it high, it'll never reset. Driving the clock, the clock period is 10 nanoseconds. I set X at 12, trying not to have a transition on my input X at the same time. All right, so let's go ahead and see that we start out here in state zero, zero. We don't transition to state zero, one until this point in time. Let's move this over here. So at this point in time, at this clock edge, So at this clock edge, our input of x is a 1. So if we're in state s0, zero, zero, we should go back to, we should go to state 1. The next thing we want to look at for is another input of 1. So here, we transition high. Here's our second 1. We're going to go to state 2. And here. Right. As we transition, our input x is 0, so we've got a 1, 1, 0. Here we go to state 3. Now let's look at these other transitions before this. So on our first clock cycle, we were in state as 0. Our input x was a 0, so we should stay in, in uh, state 0, 0. Right. Our next high clock cycle here, our input x was a 0. We're in state 0, 0, so we stay there. On our next clock input of x, our, still our input is a zero, so we haven't recognized anything in our sequence, we stay in state as zero, zero. Right. Here then, finally, at this next rising edge clock edge, this is a positive clock edge trigger flip-flop. You can see then this is where we got our first one and we stand, transition to state zero, one. Right. Over here is where we got our second one, so our next rising clock edge here. Here's our second one of our input. So we had one, one, zero. We had one, one. So that's transitioned just to state one, zero, which is our got one, one state. Finally, at the, we can see at the next rising clock edge, we got another one. So all we've had is one, 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 which we stay, we said we stay in state one, zero, because that's our got one, one. We allow the overlapping states. Finally, then at this clock edge, when our input X is a zero, we transition to state up. Uh, Three, which happens to then be our sequence, we recognize a one one zero. Notice our output z only goes high during state three; it's low everywhere else. But this is actually easier to see if we program it to a board. But we can see from a very crude and fast simulation here that our circuit is functioning as we expect. Right. So I can go ahead and pull out a D two board. Go ahead, and create the circuit for yourself. Put it on the board. Run it. Uh, now you're gonna to wanna to know what hardware you should use to do that. So let me show you then what I used here as well. What I did was I took then this circuit here after it simulated successfully and I made a block symbol out of it. So I said file, create update, create symbol, files for current file. I made sure it went into my project. So that's gonna, just gonna write over what's already there, All right? You won't have one already there for your first time, obviously. And so now I said, well, let's go ahead and make a new schematic. So file new, new block schematic. Okay. Right now I can, when I say insert symbol, if we open up our project tab, we have the symbol here for our flip flop. Right. And now we want to know what to drive this with. Well, our X input, I'd use a slider switch on. My clock input, I would use one of the push buttons on the board. My reset, I'd use a push button as well, too. Right. So we could do something like, so for our inputs, right, we're going to need X, we're going to need a clock, and we'll need something for reset. So we can wire these directly here. Let me 
me magnify that for you. Right. So for X, I would use switch zero. Right, for clock, uh, maybe key one. And for reset, maybe key zero. Right, those are the names of the signals on an Altera board. Right, that's where this is getting programmed. And then for the outputs, well, let's go ahead and see the state of our switch so we can see whether we're putting in ones or zeros. So on the red LEDs, I would go ahead and show my state of my switch. And probably show my outputs here. And I'd show Z as well, too. I'm just going to wire to this. Here, my input here is going to be switch zero. So this will be LED R0, the one immediately above switch zero. Let's go ahead and see on LED R1, the value of Q0, LED R2, the value of Q1. So my states then, and then Z, our Z output, let's see on the red LED3. Right. Similarly, if you want to see when the buttons are depressed or not depressed, right, you can go ahead and add a couple of output pins here for those as well. I'd show them, I use it, normally use a DE2 or DE2115, so I have green LEDs. So LED G0 for key 0, LED G1 for key 1, so I can show its state. Wire that here. And here, I am going to save that as sequence underscore one one zero. So we're writing over what I already had there. All right, now if you're going to program this to the board, right, you're going to want to make this your top level entity. Now I had already imported my pin assignments and set my device for this. I was going to program this to a DE2 board, so I selected the Cyclone 2 for that chip family. I had imported my pin assignments. All I would need to do now is to compile this before programming it to the board. That's what you should be doing now. All right, go ahead, select your device for your board, port your pin assignments, compile everything, download it to your board. All right, go ahead then and check to see if you can enter the sequence 110. So what, you want to have the switch zero in the one position, you want to hit your clock to key it in. So I'd start by pressing reset. When you press reset, you shouldn't see right, either of these state LEDs on. Right, you shouldn't see red LED two or three two or one on because you should be in state zero, zero, meaning they'll both be off. Then you should also see that red LED three is off because you are in state zero, zero and there's no output on there, right? And then after that, right, you want to position switch zero to a one, press the clock to key that in. You should see the output transition here. So that you should see is zero, one, meaning the red LED one should pop on when Q zero is one. Leave switch zero at one, right? Hit your clock again so that you see that you have entered one one, which is indicated by state one zero. So go ahead and do that. Run through the board, check your states, check check this machine. Right. In our next video, then we'll see how to implement the JK flip flop.